Hello everybody and welcome to LearnVMware.online channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can easily backup your VCSA appliance and how to restore it. As you know, uh, the backup features of vCenter Server Appliance are available from version 6.5, but in version 6.7, which we are going to focus today, there is a big enhancement and you can actually schedule the backups to run periodically. Let's have a look at my environment. As you can see, I have like four ESXi hypervisors, several virtual machines running on the top of my testing cluster and vCenter server appliance itself. If you want to configure a backup of the vCenter server appliance, you need to switch to the management interface of the vCenter server itself. If you want to access the management interface, you need to provide the password for the root user you have configured during the initial setup of the vCenter server appliance. Once you do that, you have several options what to do with the vCenter server itself. But today, as said, we're going to focus on the backups. So let's switch to the backup view. You have a two options here. You can always create a manual backup that you will invoke by yourself, or you can schedule a periodic backups. To do that, you need to enable backup schedule first. So let's click on the edit settings. And now you have an option to select where the backups will be stored. Probably the most common way is to store the backups on FTP server. To do that, you just need to configure the location of the backups. So there needs to be some folder where the backups will be actually stored. And then you need to provide the username and password for that FTP account. And because we are talking about scheduling backups, you have an option to select how frequently will the backups will be done. You can choose how many backups you would like to retain. And eventually you can create encrypted backups, meaning that during the restore, you need to provide a password. So even if somebody else will get hands on your files, those files will be encrypted and nobody will be able to read them. So once you've configured the backup schedule, the backups will be done according to that schedule. As you can see here, I've already created two or three manual backups and two backups were created automatically by my backup schedule. So at this stage, I have like five recovery points where I can restore my vCenter server appliance. If you want to do some manual backup, all you need to do is click manual backup. A new wizard will appear and you have an option to select if you want to backup to your scheduled backup location or you can do that one time backup to completely new, completely different FTP server. So once we have created several backups, we can try to restore our vCenter server appliance. In this video, I will just simulate the complete loss of the vCenter server appliance. So what I will do is that I will shut down the vCenter server itself and then I'm going to delete the virtual machine itself from the ESXi server. So as you can see right now, my vCenter server is completely unavailable. I have lost it. So only option I have right now is to restore from the backup. If you wish, you can open your FTP client and check what backups are actually available on the FTP server. So as you can see, this is the folder I have configured during the backups and automatically the, another folder called by the name of my old vCenter server appliance will appear and then all available backups are stored on this location. So how to actually perform the restore? Well, all you need is the default installation image of the vCenter server appliance like you would be using when you are creating a new vCenter server appliance. But in this time, we just select restore instead of install. The restore wizard looks similar to the installation wizard with, of course, several inspections. Once you've accepted the end user license agreement, you need to provide the backup location of your actual backup files. So let's try to connect to our FTP server. And as you can see, I have a six backups available. So let's select the most recent one. And once you do that, it will display all the information about the backup, where the backup was created, where it is stored, all necessary information. So let's proceed with this one. Now we need to provide the destination 
where the vCenter server will be deployed. Uh, usually it will be your ESXi server, so let's do that. Then again, similar to installation wizard, you need to provide the virtual machine name of the vCenter server appliance and new root user password. Then you need to select the size of the installation. So in my case, it will be tiny deployment where the data will be actually stored on which shared data store. And finally, in the network configuration, you have an option to adjust the settings. Those network settings are automatically populated from the backup itself. So if you are deploying the same vCenter server because you've lost one as in my scenario, you don't need to configure here anything. But on the other hand, you can restore the vCenter server appliance with a different IP address if you actually need. And that's it. That's just the summary of the action that will be performed. And now the vCenter server will start the deployment process. What happens on the background is that the new OVA template will be deployed on the destination ESXi hypervisor. And then the backup will be transferred to the vCenter server appliance. So you get the exactly same environment as during the time when the backup was created. So let's speed the video a little bit. As you can see, the first stage of the installation was successfully performed and now we need to do the second part. In the second part of the installation, you don't have any options. Everything is populated from the first stage. So all you need to do is just to check that the restore point is correct and finish the installation. And again, it will take like five to 10 minutes until the backups will be restored and all the services will be restored again. As you can see, even the second stage was successfully performed. So let's try to log into the vCenter server again. So as you can see, my environment was successfully restored. Every object are back in the place. The cluster is created. The virtual machines are running on the top of the cluster. And because we have created the performance metrics as a part of the backup, you can check your monitor tab for every single performance of every single individual object and you will have the data available. If you do the fresh installation of the vCenter server appliance, you will lose all those data, not with the backup. Also, please note that those performance metrics will be available for all objects, ESXi hypervisors, network configuration objects, uh, virtual machines, everything. And lastly, let's go back to our vCenter server appliance management itself. Again, we need to log in with the root password. And if you go to the backup, you'll see that there are no backups available. The backup schedule is configured as it was before with my FTP address, uh, the backup schedule, number of backups that we would like to retain, but the activity is empty. This is because the vCenter server appliance have a new unique ID. So it does not understand that there are existing backups. Don't worry, all the backups are still available on the FTP server, as you can see. They were not deleted, but they are just not shown in the UI. If you wait like two days, you should see another two scheduled backups performed successfully based on your backup schedule. And again, you can create a manual backup anytime. So that's it. As you have seen, Taking a backups and restoring your vCenter server appliance is pretty easy task. And I do encourage you to perform those backups because you don't want to lose your environment. Of course, you can create a new vCenter server appliance, configure the new clusters, everything. But again, as the environment gets bigger and bigger, it will take you a lot of time and you will lose all those performance metrics. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Or you can check my blog at learnvmware.online for a lot of interesting stuff from the VMware world.